everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching today. This week's hobby base card is this box fold, pop-up box fold card. And this is using the Crafty Panda Magical Unicorns stamp set, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, I haven't used this one for a while, although I have used it a lot. It's a lovely, lovely um, stamp set. But I was asked to do a card for my friend's daughter, Isla, and she's going to be five. She's unicorn obsessed, so I thought I would do this card and share it with you. I'm so pleased with how it's turned out. It's got lots of sparkle, it's very girly, and I'm sure she's going to love this. Very, very straightforward to make. Lots of hints and tips along the way. A little bit of water colouring to show you. Um, and just, yeah, just this fun fold pop-up card. So on the back here, you've got room to write your message. I have done quite a few of these and they're all on my YouTube channel if you're watching this on Facebook. And they're all different sizes and there's different ways to put them together. You can, you know, this one I've cut the flap off the front kept it on the back, some you can keep the back upright. There are so many variations, but the overall finish is like this and they, they just look so fun. All fold flat like that, you can keep them down or you can keep these up and then the whole thing, this one will fit inside. This is just a pre-made six by six card, but it gives you room then for all your little bits that are overhanging. You can see that it fits nicely inside. And you can still get away and post that one. A little bit of bulk, you might have to pay a little bit extra, but nice and easy to post. So let me show you how I made it. Okay, so this is the stamp set by Crafty Panda. And you can see, I'm going to get the glare from my light there because I've got it in the plastic. Let's just take it out quickly. You can see there what you get. There you go, that's better. So you've got, there we go. That's the unicorn and the unicorn head. There's the star, the rainbow, and then you've got these two lovely sentiments and some clouds there as well. So it's a really handy one. And like I said, I've used this so many times. It's just, yeah, it's one of those things, never gonna go out of fashion. It's always gonna be loved by somebody. So I have already gone ahead and prepared all of my um, lovely stamped images here. So I've done two of the unicorns and you can see all the glitter on the actual horn there. And then I've done my rainbows and I've used my watercolour pencils. Now I will just add in now a quick little video just on high speed of me doing my watercolouring because I know a lot of you do like to see that but just how lovely do they all look. So I'll let you see that now.
Okay, so everything you are going to need. So there is a lot um, in terms of the mats and layers, and that's just because of the um, the finish that I wanted, and I wanted to have all of the kind of colours that I have used with my watercolouring incorporated in the actual card base. So I've got the pink, the yellow, the blue, and the white. So first of all, for the main card base itself, you need a piece of cardstock that is 11 by 5. Okay, so I've done it so that if you're using A4 or letter paper size, you'll be able to make this. And um, yeah, so that's for that. Then I'm having two strips inside to attach all of my little um, watercolored images there. So these measure four and a quarter by half an inch. And you just want to score each one along the four and a quarter inch side. You want to score at half an inch and at uh, three and three quarters. Okay. So you should have a half inch tab on each one and then if you just burnish those around that's how they should look like so okay now it's entirely up to you how many you want to do but two is enough on this one because of the the depth that we've got with the card so that's those and the card base now for all of the mats and layers okay so this is for the flap that's going to fall down at the back and this is three by one and three quarters. That's the white mat. If you want to layer on top and just do the two, then I would say just do the yellow size, which I'll give you in a minute. But I'm adding the blue as well because I want these tiny little kind of borders. See them? So the blue one is one and five eighths of an inch by two and seven eighths of an inch. So it just drops down by one eighth of an inch. And then the yellow one is one and a half by two and three quarters. Now you do only need one of all of those sizes because we're just having one flap on the back, we're cutting off the one on the front. Then these ones here you're going to need, these are them here, and you need two of every size I give you. So for the white square, this is one and three quarters squared. So you need two of the white, again optional if you want the blue, but that's one and five eighths of an inch squared, and then the yellow is one and a half inches squared. So you'll start to see when you cut it how the measurements all do you know, match up again two of all those sizes and then for this one here again the white one is one and three quarters by two and three quarters the blue one and five eighths by two and five eighths and the yellow one and a half by two and a half and again two of those then on the very back I'll just do this one here your, so this is going to be the very back and front sizes, but the back you just need the white mat because that's where you're going to be writing your message or stamp your sentiment. So that is two and three quarters by three. So you'll need two pieces of white, one for the front and one for the back. Then these you just need one each because this is just going to go onto your front panel. Again, all these measurements, as I say, are always over on my blog. So once you watch the tutorial that you can then kind of see and decide what it is you want to do, how you want yours to look. But that's how the front panel will look. So again, if you want to do the blue, it's two and five eighths by two and seven eighths. And the yellow to go on top is two and a half by two and three quarters. And sometimes I, you know, I look back and I've said it wrong. So always look at the blog. The blog is always correct because um, I do go back through and check everything and I usually measure my cards as I'm writing my blog. Okay, so that's everything there. So we are, okay, right. So with your main card base, now I did already go ahead and fold mine because I just wanted to check that it was all going to, um, you know, be the size that I wanted. So along the 11 inch side, you want to score at two, five and a quarter, seven and a quarter and ten and a half okay then rotate your cardstock round so it's the short length and flip it over and then you're going to score at two and as i always say the reason we do that by flipping over our cardstock is it prevents cracking because we're going to be folding the card one way and then folding the flap down the other way okay so we've already scored our little tabs which are there you also need some acetate i'll just have that underneath this is just from, sorry, just make sure I didn't drop my scoreboard. 
from packaging. Can you see there you go? There's the um, just there is the little hook where it would have hung in the shop. I always save this, and this is really really strong acetate. So um, you know any good acetate will work. But if it's really strong stuff, that's good because it, it means that these lovely pieces here will really stay rigid and just kind of you know bounce about as opposed to maybe fall right over, which a very thin acetate would do. So um, you know I haven't given the measurements as such to these. I will be using half inch strips. I tend to go for half inch strips, but in terms of length, it's entirely up to you because you'll see that when we come to put it all together okay so burnish all of your score lines so the ones that we've done along the long side just burnish them how you, you know, normally would and then this other one the long one here is going to go that way okay and you shouldn't have any cracking because of the way we've cut it so now what we want to do is some cutting so you've got your half inch tab I've got mine here on the right hand side and first of all I'm just going to cut just across that little score line and then remove this whole piece and I'm removing the score line because these are going to be the flaps that hang down so you want them to look really nice and then I'm going to take a little wedge off of both of those sides there okay so that's what we've got so we've got our tab that folds down which is the shorter piece you can see this is longer underneath so the tabs on my right turn the whole thing round so now the tabs on the left and the smaller side is facing you and you're going to cut down all of these like so so that one that one and that one Again, if you've got any bits of your score line showing, you know, go ahead and remove them. I'm going to take a little slither off of that one there. You don't want to take any wedges off of these. You do want to keep them, you know, in their kind of square or rectangle form. But I'm pretty happy that one there has take a little bit off as well. Okay, so with that tab, what will happen is it's going to come around and it's going to stick together like so. Now, in previous tutorials, when I've done this, usually where you would join something you would have that become your back but with these box cards what I find is if you have that join at the front you then when you look inside the box you don't see any join so to the person you're giving it to they won't see where it was joined because this is actually going to be hidden at the front so it's entirely up to you there is no right or wrong if you want to have it at the back you can see there if we have it at the back to be honest, someone that's, you know, if you're making this, it's going to be hard for them to really see that because you're going to have so much going on inside. So it's just other little things. If you're a perfectionist like I tend to be sometimes, they're little things that I do. But so I'm going to keep mine at the front. So I'm going to cut this whole piece off. If you're going to have your join at the back, then you want to cut that one off. So again, entirely up to you. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this whole one off and again this is completely optional but there are quite a few variations that you can you know make with these pop-up box cards and I've made quite a few now and I think I've got about six different tutorials so I will link those in um, on my YouTube you'll be able to see all of those so again just taking off any bulkiness I get from score lines there like so so here's my tab on the right hand side got that square and then I've got these three hanging down so now I'm going to decorate and put all my mats and layers on so this is actually the front so remember the one without nothing is the front so that's going to have my three of these ones on top like so the plain one is going to be at the back so this is going to fold down but it's also going to be where your message will be some people like to keep that up and I've made those versions as well so I just want to try and show as many different versions as possible that one is going to go there and then this other one that I gave the measurements for is going to go there so there are sides so I'm going to go and get those all stuck down first of all okay so you can see now I've stuck all my panels down so again now when we bring that round you can see once I've got that obviously stuck down nicely but we've got those three panels there and then the back for our message and they're all going to fall down like so. So next, pop it back again, bring these down and then you want to stick your last bits. So these ones here are going to go like so, that one's going to go there and these ones are going to go there. So I'm going to stick all them down. Okay, so I've stuck all them down so I'm just going to carefully just burnish that top score line there and there you can see how nice does that all start to look and again once you bring that round 
and that sticks. That's how it's going to look, and that's the back. Okay, so now before we stick that down, open this up like so. Okay, and what we're going to do is grab one of these, pop a little bit of glue. You don't really want the glue to go over the edges. You don't want any to cut, you just literally want the, the kind of minimal amount because this is a fold flat card and if there's anything sticky inside here, when you go to fold it and close it, it may obviously stick to another part. So you're not working on this piece, so I flipped it over, there's the, that side, you flip it over so your tab's on the left, leave this one, you're working on that side and you're going to bring this in. To be honest, it's entirely up to you where you want to stick it but you want to keep it nice and straight. Now, if I bring this up, you can see there's the score line and the side here, and there's the score line at the top. I've come in about 3 eighths of an inch, and I've come down about 3 eighths of an inch, and you can see there where I've stuck it. Okay, and then the next one, again, I'm just going to pop some glue. Try not to, again, just a very small amount. And you want to just bring it along again, keeping it lined up with that one, giving it about another three eighths of an inch gap. When I lie them down, you can see they all line up with each other. And again, when I go that way. So if I just bring it up again, you can see where I've stuck that next one. So there's a gap there about three eighths of an inch. I've got about three eighths of an inch there. You just want to kind of keep it, you know, as equal as you can. Then what you're going to do is pop some glue on the other ends of both of these that one and this one. Don't worry they won't touch each other because obviously they're staggered so they are at different lengths. But just get your glue on both of those. Lie them down flat with the glue facing up. Make sure they're nice and straight and then this one you're going to fold right over. Okay. So you've got that side now stick into the other ones and you've got that side where you stuck the other ends. Stick it down and as you lift it up you have your pieces inside perfect okay now we need to stick this one and I've just realized <laughs> you want to make sure you can obviously get that in but it's okay because you don't really need it that thick so just cut it I'm cutting this in half so it's now a quarter inch tab like so and pop some glue so there's always a way around it don't ever panic with you know you can cover it up with a, a diamante or a bow <laughs> cut a bit off, there's always a way. And then you can just pop this one inside and just stick that one down. But it's much, much easier to stick them, the insides like that. If you lie it flat, you make sure you get a nice join there, because obviously this is the front for me, my join. And if you look in there, you're not gonna obviously see that join, but it doesn't touch that one there. I probably could have gone in a bit more actually to be fair but once you see how you do this it's you know there's lots and lots of ways but that now is how that looks now it's just the fun part of starting to decorate it all so i'm going to have the blue one on the very front here overlapping slightly so that when i close it it will close that side so it still fits in the envelope but that one's going to go on the front along with one of the shooting stars probably going to be, well I've got an idea because I've also got the name Isla who this is for so by the time this goes out she would have already had her fifth birthday but I've already decorated a very very shiny number five there and I've also done some die cuts so I've got Isla there as well make sure I've got it the right way there we go okay and I'm going to have that here now all the rest of these are going to be what kind of pop out of this card so with that sheet of acetate which is here I'm just going to freehand just cut roughly some half inch or three eighths of an inch strips you're not going to see hardly any of these I'm just going to cut myself three which is fine and then I'm going to cut one of them kind of in half so I've got here half an inch ish or three eighths of an inch by this one is three inches okay I'm going to grab this yellow unicorn and I'm going to use the red tape whenever you're using acetate red tape's really good and I'm just going to pop a tiny bit 
on the very top there. You see I just put the red tape there and then take the backing off and stick that onto the back of the unicorn, like so. So now, you see what I mean, look how rigid that is. It's just not gonna, it's got enough of a bounce, which is what you want, but it's not gonna topple over. So now that one is gonna go on this back strip here. Do you know what, I'll probably find I'm only actually gonna use the one strip. Well, I will put a few there, but you, again, when you see these, I've made so many, you, the strips inside, you can put loads on one strip, but I'm gonna have that now, and it's gonna kinda go off slightly on an angle. Bearing in mind, when you close this down, what I always say, just fold it flat as if it was in the envelope and lie it down and you want to make sure, because this is going to fit in a 6x6 six six envelope, so this is 1 inch, 2 inch, 3 inches, 4, 5, 6. So I can go a little bit higher, but I don't want to go any further than this 6x6, six six, if you imagine this is it up here, this whole square. You don't want to go outside of that, otherwise it won't go in the envelope, but I can keep that there and know that that's going to be just fine. And then when I do my rainbow, I'm going to have the rainbow one probably like so. And then I'm going to have this face here, probably going to have the number five kind of there, so it's just in front of the rainbow. This is going to be down here with one of the shooting stars. There's going to be another shooting star maybe here and another face down here. That's kind of how I'm going to have all of this. Oh, and I've got another rainbow. So maybe I can pop another rainbow behind there as well. So it doesn't look great when it's flat, but you imagine once these are all up. So I'm going to go and put acetate on the back of all of these first of all. Okay, so now they are all on acetate. I did end up cutting some more strips because then I can cut them down once I put them on. But if I just bring them up there, you can see how fun they all look and how much they sparkle. So much shine. Okay, so those two are going on the front, so I'll keep them to one side, because I'll do that last. So with this one here, like I said, it's gonna go in the back one here, and I wanna make sure, once you've done your back ones, you don't need to kind of keep lying it down, making sure it's in the right place, because all the rest, you know, will be slightly shorter. So, but that is gonna be just fine, like so. So let's bring that up. I'm going to pop some, I kind of can remember where it needs to be, just about there. Pop some double sided tape. Now you want to make sure that your tape doesn't go past half an inch. You don't want it to be any longer than the width of that strip. Otherwise, again, it will you know, mean that you've got something sticky on the um, inside and it means the card might obviously stick to another part. So you don't want that. So I'm just going to stick that one on an angle there. I'll just make sure bring that one back down. One, two, three, four, five, six. Perfect. And you can always move them. You can take them back off again. It's not the end of the round. But that's that one nicely in place. Then I've got the rainbow. So I can trim that down a bit because I know it doesn't need to be that long. But I want that one kind of like so. And I can just line it up with the other unicorn. So now I don't really need to move that one too much so I'm going to pop that down at the end like so and you need little bits you don't need a lot to tape it's such a light piece that you're popping on there but again like so you can see they're just about even that's that one and then I'm going to start playing around that and you just want to fill in the gaps so keep looking at it straight on and you know I've got obviously big gaps there I can go in a little bit there and so on until you get to the you know the front you can even stick stuff right on this front piece here but because I've got that one quite close if you what I would probably have done actually is put that one right up to that one there just so you've got more space here but again when you see me do it it doesn't really matter so I'm going to carry on and position some more of these okay so there I've stuck them all down how sweet is that Move everything on the back and it all looks nice and neat. What I've decided to do is with the shooting stars is I'm going to actually pop them on each of these side pieces because they fit in there perfectly, just like so. So I'm going to pop the other one here. I've just put them on a little bit of foam adhesive, again, just to give it a bit of dimension, like so. And then we're going to have this one on the front and that this is what finishes it off for me now is this kind of front decoration so I'm just going to cut a few strips 
thinner just so these can go on the legs of the unicorn and the tail. Everything's all a bit thin there. So I'm just going to flip this over and add some foam on the back. Okay, as you can see there, because some of this is going to, the rest of the kind of mane is going to overhang slightly. Just hold that up, make sure it's right at the bottom. Just fold that in flat. Like so. And then I'm just going to pop that out that way. Stick her name coming down like so. I think that looks so so sweet. So I'm going to get that stuck down with some glue. Now I did die cut these. I just this was just um, some words from my my own stash of dies. But I've die cut them twice. Was it three times? And then stick them on top of each other just to give it some dimension. And then I just use some shimmer, um, my shimmer brush, just over the top there just to give it lots and lots of sparkle because that's what you have when you've got unicorns. And there you go. How adorable is that card? Look at all the shine. Everything is sparkling. It's got a nice little wobble to it. It all folds flat so you can pop the two at the back up and then keep that one down and it will fit inside your 6x6 six six card. I've just realised my 5 is probably too high so I'm going to have to bring that down or I may just make myself a slightly bigger envelope because I do like that that comes up a bit higher than everything else but yeah I just I just love the shine to this and yeah I just think it's super cute. I want to be given this card and on the back as I said before you've got plenty of room there for your message but it stands up beautifully and yeah I hope she loves this. So I hope you've enjoyed today's box card pop-up box card tutorial. Like I said, I've shared that playlist, so you can just click on that and it'll bring down all the other versions that I've made as well. Every single one is a different size, so whenever I try and do another of the same style card, I try and change the sizes or something. But yeah, I love this. So now it's all ready to go to the birthday gal. So that is it from me today. I hope you've enjoyed today. If you have, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you get to see more. Thanks for watching. Bye.